If you're not on television, you're on the radio, and if yeah, you're not on the radio, yeah. you're beavering in the background. Yeah, here John. I am, turning the page. How, how do you fit all this work into one week? I don't know. Oh, it's not easy. I mean, see, from my early teens, um, I carried around feelings of inferiority. My nose is too big. Turn around. No, it's not me. It's a bloke who's, <laughs> bloke who's written to record mirror. <laughs> there you go, you see. They're at me straight away. Well, actually, well, the interesting thing is, actually, having been on telly, you don't realise what you look like from the side, really, because you always look at yourself from the front. Because my nose... I mean, I always knew it was quite big. There's a photograph of me, me and uh, um, Pete Townsend somewhere from years ago looking like two Concords about to crash, you know, <laughs> having a conversation. <laughs> but on the other hand, it does... As I, I must admit, as I turn sideways on the telly, it looks like a spinnaker or whatever it is on the front of a boat. Let's have a look. Go on, let's have a look. Definitely. Yep, OK. Well, the little king anyway, the, the, yeah, the papers. Yep, yep. So, anyway, no, it wasn't me. There's somebody called David from South London. Uh, record Mirror writes to... It's that sort of time of year. From my early teens, I've carried around feelings of inferiority. My nose is too big. I never thought about having plastic surgery until now, and he's been to the doctor and so on. Oh, David, these things do happen. If you're listening from South London, you're this letter. Everybody at your sort of age, you know, you think something's wrong with you, people are laughing at you. It's probably not. And, and as he points out, he's been to, along to the doctor, and anyway, the, the queue there to have... Uh, work done there is as, as long as your nose. I'm, I mean, not, not yours, David. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a bit like that. I tell you, but well, because you see, it's the silly season. What's what's in the pop press? Almost nothing. So, I mean, have you noticed Tony Wilson's nose? Well, we're talking about nose jobs. Um, it's very it long. Turns, isn't it? It's longish, but it turns yeah. to the right. I hadn't noticed that. Well, years ago, I mean, his nose turned to the right. This is um, um, just carrying on apropos of nothing, but I mean, I remember it was about ten years ago, and he came in and said, he spoke to his doctor, and because it's Tony Wilson here, anybody listening to Tony, Tony Wilson who produces Tommy Vance, but don't, don't do his doctor, and he, his nose, it turned to the right. And he came in one day, all like plasters and bruises, and he said, Well, I had this nose job, I had it fixed. I they said, No, that's okay, have it, it'll be fine. And about three weeks later, oh, they tore all the stuff off. His nose turned to the left. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, oh, sorry, Mr Wilson. And they said, that's all right, let it settle, about six months, and then we, you know, I don't hurt you, we'll come oh, back. And, then, and they did it oh. all over again, took it off again, and they go, shh, <laughs> turns to the right again. <laughs> so he said, forget it, oh, leave it. Dear. I just went in the office to check that it turns to the right now, so it was right, left, right, it's just wonderful. So does anyway, yours, say, By the way, your nose turns to the right. <sighs> Look, let's get on with this thing, we'll be here all night. Um, so, no more about Tony Wilson's nose. Um, you see, the papers are all back, the enemy's back on the streets, Melody Maker. Of course, what's happening? Now, out. Approximately now. They're all back. It's rather like they. Come on, let's get the world's television assembled. And, of course, you know, we've got a man here with 12 legs, and they all come rushing down. I don't know, I'll get the lights out, right? Cameras, roll them. Oh, he's run off. You know, I mean, there's nothing there. You know what I mean? And I look at it and I think, silly season again. We're looking for things. See, here, look, there's one interesting. You mentioned last week, there's a photo here of uh, um, Noddy Holder. Oh, I saw that one, yeah. With a group. Uh, the Mama's group, boys. That's yeah. right, Mama's boys and Mama. We're all crazy now. And they had a little bit of a drink up, and there's Noddy turned up and had a smile and a laugh and a drink with them. One of them is doing almost the, the, the finger chicken. <laughs> yes. that's, that's exactly Boop. yes. Where where it's a favourite one ever. Regular listeners from Radio One disc jockeys. When anybody pulls out a camera, they put a face like this, ooh, like the back end of a chicken, sort of pull them, <laughs> and then they point with a thumb sticking in the air at nothing particular, like ooh, sometimes their own heads. Ooh, like that. But anyway, there it is. It just proves it's not a, it's not a completely died out art. But really, the music papers. What can you expect? These reviews and things. But most will turn to the the pops. You know, the the ordinary daily pop papers. Here we are. Daily Star on Wednesday. George and Durrani in bus stop. Here. I don't, did you read that? <laughs> Boy, George, last night, denied that he punched a teenage Duran Duran fan and left a line in a pool of blood. Apparently, they'd all been waiting for him to come out of somewhere, and it says here in the store, I never read it, but I mean, sometimes read it, but it said, they had gathered, these are the girls, the Duran fans, around George, in a big circle, and were burning George's records and pictures and chanting madly. I mean, it's bad enough to come out of some <laughs> studio, and there they're all burning your picture, but then there were little girls going, madly, 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 he says, stop it! Silly, madly girls. But um, it looks a bit of a dodgy story. Even the girl's mother says, I had been told that her nose was bleeding afterwards, but there was no sign of it by the time she came home. And George said, I would never have punched her, you know, and he implies that this girl is, is lying. And, in fact, the girl certainly was lying. <laughs> page of the Sun, <laughs> here, front page. Picture of a lying in the gutter. On the, on the floor, Lying, yeah. the girl is lying there, blood spurting out of a little snout. Somebody <laughs> dabbing it up. Whether it's the same girl, you know, the popular papers these days, a different girl, a stunt girl, we'll never know. But this a girl with blood lying in the gutter. Uh, Alison, her name is, turned the page and see what she had to say. Well, she had a real go at Boy George. But apparently, Boy George turned around and he said, 
is said to have yelled that he had more chance of getting into bed with Simon Le Bon than any of that lot. It says, and Alison then called him a fat puff. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, I back. Come ca on. Cannot believe that was the front page lead story of yes, the Sun. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. China's on fire, but no. Goodness no. gracious. Oh, yeah. But anyway, back to the Mellon Bucket. Enough of fat puffs. Let's turn the. Hello, me! <laughs> I'm in there. And there's a letter addressed to me through the Melody Maker. I turn the pages. There's a letter. Dear John Waters, being an avid collector of the music. It just shows I must be known now. Must be known. Be it, uh, being an avid collector of the music press, I listen to your show, blah, 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 you know. And she says, I'm referring. Oh, yes, she described me. She says, uh, um, uh, I can go through it with you, the, the, the papers. She has them all in her bedroom. Oh, it's a he. I'm sorry about this, Nigel Warwick. But uh, I said, but lately, you've become a biased beep. I'm referring, of course, to your coverage of the New Musical Express. This is in Melody Maker. She says, of the New Musical Ex Express, call it a music paper? How can you possibly like it? And then as a go at me, because she says, remember their interview with Japan, November 1982? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Nigel. Yes, I do. Absolutely excellent. Yes, I do. I, I, I've got an absolute encyclopedia in my... Yes, it was great. It was wishy-washy, soap sod, plug hole, doom crap. It's not. Yes, of course you're right, Nigel. I'm sure. Who are these kids? I mean, they seem to remember everything. But a few weeks ago, Melody Maker ran a constructive, accurate, interesting interview with David Sylvian by one of my favourite journalists, Steve Sutherland. Where was your coverage, John Waters? Then, hmm, just remember there are other papers around as well as the enemy. Well, I did the enemy, Nigel, the other week because it had been off for about ten weeks, and then suddenly it came back the week before. I did Melody Maker. Japan never really entered into it. P.S. Says Nigel, is John Waters over four? because he sounds like it. Well, round the what? <laughs> now, I, I make no secret about it being certainly over 40. Yes, my birthday the other week, 45 I was. PPS, says Nigel, carrying on. I'll kill John Peel for slagging the ink in the well on round table. You see, they all listen to us. They don't want us yes. to have opinions, you see. No, no. And then Steve Sutherland, smart Alec, answers, my sort of letter, Nigel. But, as he gets praise in it. But come now, you cut me to the quick. One of my favourite journalists? Surely there is no other. Walters, by the way, has been blathering on since the First World War, carries a stomach as bloated as Daly's ego. Just a minute. Some people hold their stomachs in. I happen when Steve Sutherland was passing just to be sticking it out. That's what happens. And Daly Thompson is sometimes quite a modest chap, so I don't know what... And he says, and he sports a beard, that's me, as a tribute to Fairport Convention. What's he talking about? I hardly know them. <laughs> is a musical express still going? Is he trying to imply that I'm uh, all right, Melody Maker? Let's see what you're covering if you're so clever. Let's have a quick turn, just casually. Sound effects of man turning paper casually, casually. Talk, talk, talk. That's often had some good gossip. And don't forget, in that, I have been both Chap of the Week and Wally of the Week, the only person to have been that on separate weeks. And talk, talk, talk says, Did you see? Daily. Just before he embarked on the crucial pole vault, they claim he was looking at the Melody Maker and reading last week's epic talk, talk, talk tribute. Now, come on. In my day, it used to be Charlie Parker and people like that on the front door. Later on, Elvis Presley or something, but blimey. Daily Thompson. OK, joke's over. Who's chap of the week? Daily Thompson. Daily Thompson, chap of the week. Huh, let's turn to Wally. Wally of the week! Daily Thompson! Because they claim he could have gone on for the world record and just eased off and didn't bother. That's, that's, that's another person who's been chap of the week and Wally of the week. Decathlon, Chap of the Week, Wally of the Week. Now, what do you get? It's gold medals. I was the only person who'd been that before. OK, let's move around. Quote of the Week. It's the best moment since my granny caught her beep in the mangle. Daily Thompson on his Olympics decathlon top. Oh, this is going to... OK, joke's over, Melody Maker. Let's turn to some sensible record reviews. What are they looking at? Phil Fearon and Galaxy. They say it's hard to come down heavy on Phil Fearon. The Daily Thompson of Black Pop Music. <laughs> That's it. I'm sick of that. That paper's gone quite mad. I will turn back to, to uh, NME and see what's happening. You know what NME's like? It's all whacking, isn't it? You know, they, they, everybody who reads it criticises the paper, the paper criticises the artist, and the whack, whack. Strong criticism always. So, this is a letter, comes in straight away. So, the NME's back after ten weeks. So, what's changed? There were no reviews of the concert I did go to whilst you were away. You slagged off the singles I did like and vice versa, and you didn't print my letter. <laughs> Hoping for a change next week. And whatever he's called, Don Watson, who edits these letters, says, uh, Oh, we can't say how sorry we are. If in future you could send us a list of where you've been and what you liked every week, we'll endeavour to make sure you don't find out about anything you weren't aware of or reading anything you disagree with. Pooh, more or less. I mean, do you remember that writer who was in, last? was it last week or the week before, Bieber Kopf? Mm -hmm. and, and I did a little anagram, and it sounded like the all-purpose New Musical Express reviewer, Bop Kabiff. Take <laughs> that. There's a letter against her, Bop Kabiff, and they come, whack, Bop Kabiff back. 
Bieber cops should remember that John Lydon has been responsible for some of the most original work of recent years because she slagged off the, uh, the John Lydon record, if you remember, the PIL record. And so DW, Don Watson, answers on behalf of Bob Kabiff, I hereby recognise the sheer blinding magnificence of Metal Box, but the new one's still a sack of budgie spew. Still, if that's what you want... I mean, what the things they write, the imagery! Who are they giving the singles page to? Bop Kabiff! She's doing the old lot. Cindy Lauper, she bop. That's the new record. It's all bop in here. So straight away she starts off here and says, uh, rolling the worst traits of Toya, Lovitch, Lennon and Ullman into one, she's happily certified herself as a genuine grade-A geek. Now, that's a new insult. Bop Kabiff, grade-A geek. There's another bop one, Ian Page and bop. It's bop all over the place. <laughs> Never trust old mods, says bop Kabiff. They don't talk, they only issue manifestos. And then she says, good time, I'll never like this strident. <laughs> Hang on. That's a sentence. Good time, I'll never like this strident. There's no, 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 nothing else in it, that's all it says. What do you have to... You see, you, you don't like to knock them, because they've obviously all got sociology degrees, people who work for enemy, and Bob Kabiff is obviously... No, no, I'm sure she's a wonderful woman. She'll probably come and hit me next time we go somewhere. But this is Shango. She does a review of Shango, the Shango message, Shango. This is the part of the review, the first off. Research product, project for a BBC Two documentary. Repeat. The Bronx dance floor as a new video battlefield game. Electro as a knifeless war zone. Shango is hip-hop, bounced uptown and down, st downtown, from rarefied Manhattan jazz to rat-infested cellars and back... Or so the romance would have it. <laughs> the material disinterest and scientific eye in the demand producer basis Bill Laswell has brought to bear on Shango is here counterbalanced by Africa Bombarda Street Sus. Or so the romance would have it. You c does she like it? <laughs> you know what you mean? Get down there. You can imagine saying, Oh, I'm going to write back about that. Oh, yeah, what will you write? Oh, I don't know. I'll read it again. <laughs> I mean, what could you say? But I'm sure it's very deep. It's just too deep for me. Finally, because it's silly season, there's always interesting facts that you did not know. Here, for instance, is Simon Le Bon. I didn't know he was a proper actor. I should know these sort of things at some stage. Page from Spotlight. Do you remember Limar had a page in Spotlight mm. from all his stuff? Simon Le Bon, height six feet one inch. And what is he an equity, equity member? He's been in Tom Brown's school. That's interesting oh, for Duran yeah. fans. There's a photograph of him looking a bit of a burp, frankly. Absolutely, but, uh, right. Lovely then, haircut. Facts about people that you and I know even better than Simon. And we have met Simon C. Duran Duran is all dancing around, <laughs> chanting, Madly, madly, madly! <laughs> Because you look like, and here's a smash hit straight away. I'd love a photo and some details about the new Radio 1 DJ, Dixie Peach. Could that be his real name? Well, he could have been. Do you know what his real name is? It, he shares his real name with you, actually, but it's not John. Bernard Michael. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, actually, I thought he must be like one of the Worcestershire Peaches. I just assumed it was an old family name, you know. <laughs> Dixie Peach. There he was. Turns out he's probably related to George Michael, because he comes from Tottenham there, North London. <laughs> Michael. Then the, in sounds, there was a letter here. Sounds here. And it's in the middle of the letter. That, having a go at all the old timers, I'm sorry about this for you, because, you know, you're one of them, I suppose. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but on, on uh, uh, Top of the Pops. It says, if these people represent the great granddads of the industry, then the DJs just surely, oh, I'm not thinking that mean must, must surely be the granddads. I think the sole aim of the Top of the Pops producer is to score over 100 with the combined ages of the DJs appearing. OK, says this letter writer. So Mike Reed knows all his musical facts as he reads them from the auto cue. And Jimmy Savile's done his bit for charity. He can afford to. And Janice Long is the new young blood, even though she's married with 100 kids. <laughs> in brackets, probably. <laughs> it says, oh, you see, they'll try anything in the silly season. Right, the silly season, you obviously finish up, let's finish up by turning to Smash It's, which is always rather smashing. I do rather like it. And they've got a couple of competitions, and they're on the same page. One of them is to do with King Kurt, and it's the Smash Hits Banana Competition. Here's five groups' names. Which one is not the name of a real group? Which one is not the name of a real group? Strawberry Switchblade, Heavy Raspberry, Banana Rama, Kid Creole and the Coconuts, and Orange Juice. Well, why are you thinking of that? Oh, your mind's <laughs> whirring. But you look over the other side, talking about whirring, it's the rail thing. And apparently, Top of the Pops, you perhaps know all about this. There's, there's some special time, a train's going to be called Top of the Pops. Yeah, we're doing the show live That's on right. the 30th, yeah. And it's, the, the disc jockey's on the train. London to Bristol in the duration yeah. of the show. Yep, yeah, you know all about this. Mm. But they've got some tickets uh, that, that, that they're doing in Smash Hits. You can win a pair of tickets. And it says, but here's the question. Which of these is the name 
of a famous British rail train? Which of these is the name of a famous British rail train? The Flying Scotsman? The Flying Dutchman? The Flying Lizard? <laughs> or the Flying Pickets? <laughs> God, it's a stiff one, as they say. Good heavens, I don't think I'll get onto that train. <laughs> Let, let's, we'd better go out with some music. Uh, if you're listening, everybody, Edwin Collins and Paul Quinn are going now to sing a title that they have out as a single. Is it Short Hairy Legs, Big Fat Bum, Great Smelly Feet, Pale Blue Eyes? Monday between 7 and 10. His float-up CP enjoys a dress. Mm -hmm.